something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun on the left Telling me I got you to take care Stop and stop now What's that sound? I What a few day for the heat A thousand people in the street Singing songs in a carrying sight What you say who ain't for our sight Time to stop now What's that sound I don't want to go to Sound if I look what's what's going down. The battle lines being drawn. No one's right, it's everybody's wrong. Young people speaking their minds. Feeling so much resistance from behind. It's time to stop the children. What's that sound if I look what's going down? Here's to be the sun. Stop now, what's that sound? Interestingly enough, that song was, uh, political as it was, was not a Vietnam protest song, as some people think. It was inspired by the women's movement. So, um, I thought it appropriate with the times today. There's a lot of division and things like that, but I believe that there are things we can remain united in. And I think uh, assisting individuals in our community to becoming more independent is truly, again, a noble, a noble cause. When I was growing up, um, I didn't want to be a soccer player or a river dancer or any of the obvious things that my parents were probably crossing their fingers and toes hoping I would want to be. I uh, at first wanted to be Bruce Lee, so um, I took the martial arts, I received the training, and have actually had to use it several times in my, my adult life. Uh, I was glad that I had self-defense uh, training because the last time somebody tried to take my purse, I was able to keep it and chase off the offending bandits, so to speak. That was aimed at humor. So uh, if I did carry a purse, I wouldn't be ashamed of it, but there's no way I'd let anybody get it from me either. So um, there we go. So uh, my point being that my goals were never built upon the perception of my limitations, and I don't think anybody's are. I think the heart wants what it is, wants, and I think we want to be who we want to be. And erasing those barriers is really, I think, what our job is today, uh, just not only for ourselves, but for others. So I want to um, take a moment and play a song that sort of reflects the commonality of, of our of our vision here. This one's called We Are the Same. Again with a G string, I do apologize. The next time you invite me to the Imagine Awards, I will have a proper G string. So. And a D string, we can pause. <laughs> Just pause.
If I send an invitation to my world, come and stay here. If I had a chance to sing my song, this is what I'd say. We are more the same. You may think you and me, we are the same. Does anybody have to take the blame? The same, we're more the same than you may think. You and me, we are the same. It's a shame to be ashamed. I don't want you to look the other way. Stumble around thinking of what to say. We don't want to be anybody else. I'm okay with my own self. said doo-doo too many times for a conference. Thank you very much. I did write that song. Well, my dad left home when I was three. He didn't leave too much for Ma and me. Just his old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. Well, I don't blame him that he run and hid, but the meanest thing he ever did was before he left, he had to go and name me Sue. Well, he must have thought it was quite a joke, and it got a whole lot of laughs from lots of folks. It seemed I had to fight my whole life through. Some girl would giggle and I'd get red and some would laugh, I'd have to bust his head. I tell you, life ain't easy for a boy named Sue. So I grew up quick and I grew up mean and my feet got hard and my wits got keen and I rode from town to town just to hide my shame. So I made me a vow to the moon and stars, I'd search all the honky tonks and bars. Did that man to give me that awful name. Well, it was Gatlinburg in mid-July, and I just hit town, my throat was dry. Thought I'd stop and have myself through. So on an old saloon in a street of mud, there at the table, dealing five-car studs, had a dirty, mangy dog that named me Sue. That snake was my own sweet dad Had a worn out picture my mama had I knew the scar on his cheek and his evil eye Well he was big and gray and bent and old And I looked at him and my blood went cold I said, my name is Sue, how do you do? That's what I told him Well I got him right between the eyes And he went right down, but to my surprise he Come up with a knife, tried to cut off a piece of my ear well, I got it one between the teeth and me scratched right through the walls and out the teeth the street, kicking in the gouging and the mud and the blood and the beer. Well, I can tell you I fought some tougher men, but I really can't remember when. He bit like a kick like a mule and bit like a crocodile, or you can say he bit like a mule and kicked like a crocodile. Ugh. Ugh. Next <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So when I was growing up, you'll be hearing a lot about that. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I was actually born this way. Um, gorgeous. Humble. No, I, I have an obvious physical feature that was also uh, attributed to me. I was born with a, a surprisingly big nose, and I've really come to accept myself. That's slightly old material. I think I gave that to you guys some years ago when I came out here. But for those that you don't know, my name's Mark. I was actually born without arms. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, it would have been really easy for my folks to give me a pass on stuff. But... I thought of a really good story. One Sunday morning, I was maybe 10 years old, and I'd woken up 
uh, thinking I was going to go out and play. And uh, my dad calls me over to the yard, and he's got a pile of leaves that he's kicked together. Now, we had a pretty big yard. There were a lot of leaves in the fall, even in San Diego. So um, my dad goes, hey, uh, Mark, you've been using your feet your whole life. I've been using my feet uh, for reasons other than walking for about the last 15 minutes, and I was able to rake up this many leaves. So as far as I'm concerned, you could finish the yard. <laughs> so um, that set a tone of accountability that really uh, is essential, I think, to our personal self of awareness and to our self-confidence and things like that, that to be held to task at whatever level we are at is um, far more benevolent in the long run, I think, than giving somebody a pass. Um, allowing somebody to figure out how to do something, uh, allowing them to be honest about their potential limitations or struggles is also okay. But put me in, coach, and I think that most of the clients of Roush and from the coaches to the, to the clientele um, would probably agree that put me in coach is, is something that every human being wants to hear growing up and not because they're being given a obligatory or ceremonial place on the team but a place to do some good on the team, to do some good for the team. So again, that's uh, one of the main reasons I was so excited to come out here and video myself for you guys out there because I think that that is a current that runs strongly through your organization. And, and even though this is a gala, and this is a party, and it's a celebration, I think we can celebrate the tenets and the, the philosophy of human value with each other, even, even during a gala. So, my dad, who made me break up the leaves, this song is not about him. But I'm going to dedicate it to him anyway. So. Well, my dad left home when I was three. He didn't leave too much for Ma and me. Just this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. Well, I don't blame him that he run and hid with the meanest thing he ever did. Before he left, he had to go and name me Sue. Well, he must have thought it was quite a joke and it got a lot of laughs from lots of folks. Seemed I had to fight my whole life through. Some girl would giggle and I'd get red Some boy would laugh, I'd bust his head I tell you, life ain't easy for a boy named Sue So I grew up quick and I grew up mean And my feet got hard and my wits got keen And I rolled from town to town just to hide my shame So it made me a vow to the moon and the stars I'd search all the honky-tonkin' bars And get that man to give me that awful name I was Gatlinburg in mid-July and I just hit town and my throat was dry Thought I'd stop and have myself a brew So on an old saloon in the street of mud There at the table kneeling studs Had a dirty mangy dog named me Sue Well I knew that snake was my own sweet dad From a worn out picture my mama had To the scarlet cheek and his evil eye I was big and gray and bent old and I looked at him and my blood run cold and I said, my name is Sue, how do you do? Now you gonna die. Well I got him one right between the eyes, he went straight down but to my surprise, he come up with a knife and cut off a piece of my ear. What? Well, I got him right between the teeth and we went through the walls and out in the street, just a chicken and a cow and in the mud and the blood and the beer. Well, I'd like to tell you I fought tougher men, but I really can't remember when. He kicked like a mule, he spit like a crocodile. Why well, he went, heard him pass, and I heard him swear, and he went for his gun, and I knew my first, and I swear he sat there looking at me. I could have sworn I seen him smile. He said, son, this world is rough, and if a man's gonna make it, he's gotta be tough. And I knew I wouldn't always be there to help you along. So I give you that name and I said goodbye. I knew he's either gonna have to get real tough or die. And I believe it's that name that helped to make you strong. Now you just fought one hell of a fight. And I know you hate me and you got the right. Kill me now, I wouldn't blame you if you do. 
But you ought to thank me before I die For the gravel and the guts and the spit in your eye Cause I'm the son of a gun and named you Sue What could I do? Got all choked up and I threw down my gun And I called him my pa and he called me his son And I rode away with a different point of view And I think about him every now and then And every time I try, every time I win And if I ever have a son I think I'm gonna name him Shirley Temple. Thank you. Hope you had fun with that. All right, you tell me when you're ready. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that song. We're having, we're having fun with it today. Uh, so as you can see behind me, I've, I've been in the desert here. My family has a, a property here I've been looking after a little bit. And uh, the other night, I'm driving uh, home on a desert road, and you have to imagine that I'll maybe see one other car for per 30 minute drive. So coming back from town with my groceries, I blow a tire, boom! I'm stuck on the side of the road, and I'm out of cell phone range pretty much. So I'm able to flag down a neighbor who gets me off the road after about two hours in the dark. By the way, it wasn't that bad, it was comfortable out. But my point is this, the next day when my neighbor brings me back to change my tire, it becomes apparent that with his senior citizeness, he's about 80, he wasn't going to be able to really do anything. So um, here's a man who was born with a super big nose, uh, who hasn't changed a tire in 25 years, and maybe never by himself, uh, with nothing but the coaching of a, a well-meaning but a somewhat disabled individual who wasn't able to physically help me. So um, I would have filmed it, but I think that would have been a bit arrogant. However, and it was also kind of an emergency situation. But I was actually able to change my own tire and put a put a donut on it and get the lug nuts tight enough to be able to get me to, to an auto mechanic. And um, to some people that's not a big deal, and to other people it is. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have all their limbs that have never had to change a tire or were smart enough to have AAA. But for me myself, um, as I'm driving down the road on a donut tire that I had put on myself, including tightening it, um, was first a little scary, to be honest with you. I'm driving around these roads at 10, 15 miles an hour, wondering if the donut's going to come off. And it doesn't, so I get brave and I get up to about 35, 40 miles an hour. And I make it into town and um, the mechanic actually tells me that the donut was put on fine and I would have been fine to drive around for a day or two if I needed to. And um, I think if I can rewind back to the night that my tire blew, it seemed like an impossible situation. And I, like anybody else, am happy being comfortable and uh, I don't wake up every day just inviting the next challenge. If you do, perhaps you could speak at the Imagine Awards too. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, I think sometimes life presents all of us challenges and I think that sometimes they're good for us because they remind us that we do have more strength, more ability, more capability uh, within us than we might need to tap into on a daily basis. So my personal journey right now is to um, try to go that little bit of an extra extra yard or two. You know, if you're watching football and you're a football fan, and by the way, today is Super Bowl Sunday. I hope it worked out well for all of you. I had a gig. So if you watch the touchdown and you watch somebody get nailed right at the foot, right at the at the at the line. And then you see him oomph, oomph, oomph a couple more steps into that, to that end zone. I would like to encourage myself, all of you, to go ahead and try that extra step next time things looks like you're about to get cremated by a linebacker. Life has a lot of linebackers. And um, I say, uh, let him bounce off you and take a few more steps. So I'd like to thank Roush Industries, Roush Incorporated. And uh, I want to tell you what a wonderful time I've had being involved with the Imagine Awards again. And uh, I'm sure that 
there are many people that indeed have a bright and confident future uh, because of the little bit of a helping hand they've had behind them to reach forward and try to change that flat tire or beat up a guy named, that named you Sue. Um, so I'm going to leave, uh, leave you with this as an intimate song, and I mean it to, uh, to all of you. As soon as the second car that lives in this town goes by. Quiet on the set. Sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away Ain't no sunshine when she's gone She's always gone too long Anytime she goes away Wonder this time where she's gone Wondering if she's gonna stay Sunshine when she gone, this house is ain't no home. Anytime she goes away, I know, 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 I only darkness every day Ain't no sunshine when she gone She's always gone too long Anytime she goes away Anytime she goes away Anytime she goes away Till next time. Okay. Hey, it's Mark Goffany here. Um, so glad to be back with you guys for this fantastic event. Just imagine the words. I'm in. I'm Put me in, coach. Um, I'm shooting here from lovely Borrego Springs. And uh, if you haven't met me yet, uh, my name is Mark Goffany. I was born here in San Diego County. And uh, I was born with no arms. I've been a professional musician for about 30 years. I've been making a living, about 10. <laughs> Heard a great story the other day. Musician. A guy who loads $2,000 worth of music gear into a $500 car to drive 50 miles to make 50 bucks. That was me. So uh, some of my accolades I would like to share with you that qualified me to be part of such an awesome event or that I was part of a Fox NFL Super Bowl commercial called Feet, which I changed to Baby's Diaper. And I've performed around the world at different events. And um, I'm here today just to let you guys know that having somebody behind you to help you get things in place to go out and kick some butt for yourself is a fantastic uh, creed to have. And it's why I'm so happy to be working with your agency today with Roush. So, Thanks for that. Um, if you want to find me, you can find me at Mark E. Goffany on Facebook. You can also find me at Mark E. Goffany on Instagram. And you can also find me at BigToeRocks.com and turn it all up. So, those are my uh, things. Uh, you can catch up on some of the things I've been doing if you are willing. And the original songs that I played for you today, are, or I'm going to play, are also available um, on iTunes and anywhere. So I would appreciate it if you would follow me. And uh, I'd love to stay in touch with you guys. And I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. So thanks again for inviting me.